Hey guys, I'm Eric with Extreme Terrain. In this video, we're gonna do a review and install of this Mammoth three inch front, two inch rear leveling kit for all 2005 and later Toyota Tacomas. Now this kit's really gonna to appeal to the Tacoma owner out there who is looking to lift their truck in a very affordable way and they're not necessarily looking for a very sophisticated suspension lift. Now this kit will effectively lift the front end of your truck by about three inches and will add about two inches to the rear and that's gonna basically take away the factory designed rake. Now, what do I mean by rake? Rake is that kind of slightly nose down stance that the Tacomas and most vehicles come with from the factory. Now, that rake on pickup trucks is useful when you add cargo or other loads to the rear of your truck that's gonna cause the rear of your truck to squat down. This kit is going to basically eliminate that and give you added ground clearance and also the potential to add an upsized tire if you wish. Now, as you can see, I have all the components on the table here in front of me. This is a pretty basic kit, and it is gonna give you that lift that you're looking for. So if you want a more complicated, complex suspension lift that will allow you to have more articulation with your suspension, or you wanna do more extreme off-roading, I encourage you to look at other solutions. But if you're simply looking to get added ground clearance for your truck, this is an excellent solution at a very affordable price. Now the components you see here in front of me, we have the front spacers here that are made from billet aluminum and they're coated in a black anodized finish. And these rear blocks are made out of sturdy steel and coated in a thick, durable black powder coat. Now one thing I do wanna point out with the front spacers is that when you unbox them and you take a look at them, they're not actually three inches thick. These front spacer blocks actually measure about an inch and a half thick but because when you add them to the top of your front struts, it's gonna change the suspension geometry in a way that's gonna actually give you about three inches of lift. Now I've kind of generally mentioned price a little bit earlier in this video. These currently come in under $125 for this entire kit. Now you're gonna find that's very competitive compared to other basic spacer lift kits, and it's certainly a lot more affordable than full-blown suspension lift kits. Now, as far as the installation goes, I'm giving this a very solid two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. There is some in-depth suspension work we're obviously gonna be doing, and we're gonna demonstrate that a little bit later here in the video. You are gonna have to find a way to safely lift your truck and secure it up in the air on jack stands, as well as using a floor jack. So anytime you do that, you wanna make sure you're going nice and methodically through the installation and being safe. With that said, I think you should be able to get this job done in about four hours with some basic hand tools, it might be a tool or two that we're gonna talk about here in the video that you might not have in your personal toolkit. So just kind of weigh that out. Going into this, we're gonna show you what you're gonna need and walk you through the install. So let's take a look at those tools right now and go ahead with the installation. All right guys, so the tools we're using for this video, we're using an impact wrench, a long pry bar, a six millimeter Allen socket, an extension, a swivel socket, 10, 12, 14, 17, 18, and 19 millimeter sockets, as well as also a 19 millimeter deep well socket, a pair of pliers, a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 17 millimeter crescent, a 16 and 18 millimeter ratcheting wrenches, a 19 millimeter crescent, a hammer, and some penetrating oil. All right, at this stage, you're gonna have your truck lifted and wheels and tires removed. Now make sure when you're lifting your vehicle that you have strong, good condition jack stands underneath the frame of your truck and have a floor jack ready to be able to manipulate the suspension. And I'll go into that a little bit more later. But really overall, what we're looking to do is only loosen and remove those components that we're gonna need to do in order to get our strut out. And then we're gonna basically bolt on the spacer block to the top of the strut tower and reinstall it. So we're, not, we're gonna try not to do anything more than basically what we need to do to get access to that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now eventually we're gonna disconnect our top uh, ball joint that's connecting our uh, spindle here to our upper control arm. But before we can do that, we're gonna need to create a little bit of slack in our brake lines here so we don't cause any damage. So the first thing we wanna do is take out the bolt here that's holding this bracket to our upper control arm. And this is a 10 millimeter socket. Second bracket is right here, attached to the spindle. This is a 12 millimeter. Now 
And something I like to do, guys, kind of a little tip, is so you don't lose the hardware and you remember which bolts go where, I just go ahead and put them back in, finger tight. Makes everything a little bit easier when we're going back to reassembling our front suspension. All right, next we're gonna to wanna to disconnect our tie rod end from the spindle. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to remove this cotter pin right here. And so just grab some pliers. And then this castle nut's gonna come off, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket for that. Now, if that doesn't want to come out, you can grab a hammer and we'll tap here to try and get this to pop out. If you're going to be given some real solid wax on here, if you have a really stubborn fitting, I recommend just putting your castle nut back on there. Just finger tight, not all the way down, um, so you're protecting the threads as well. Apply a little downward force with a pry bar here while I'm hitting with the hammer. That's going to allow us to turn this as needed because next uh, we're going to need to access some more things and that's going to give us the room to do that. All right, next we're gonna remove uh, this nut here so we can get our sway bar link out of here. Because uh, eventually, like I said, we're gonna disconnect the ball joint up here and lean the spindle out. So in order to do that, we need to disconnect this. I know I told you guys to put this back in before as a tip, but actually we're gonna need to remove that right now just to get us better access to this nut. I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench on here. Because it's probably gonna wanna turn The entire fixture, as you can see right there, that's starting to turn. So in order to counteract that, grab a six millimeter Allen key, or I have a six millimeter Allen socket here. Put that in place. Now depending on the condition of your truck, if you got a lot of rust build up here, this might be a little more difficult to take off. We obviously work on these trucks a lot here. At extreme. We obviously work on these trucks here a lot at extreme terrain, so these kind of come off a little bit easier. Your experience might be a little bit more challenging. So go ahead, pull that out, and we can hold that down kind of out of our way. And next, we're going to go after the ball joint up top here. All right, before we're going to take this out, actually, guys, we're going to go after the three nuts up top here using a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Um, I gave these a shot of PB Blaster penetrating oil uh, before we started filming. You're probably going to want to do the same. These are likely to be pretty tight for you. So now they have that loose and I'm just going to leave that a couple threads on. We'll leave this one on while we take the other two off. All right, first thing we need to do to get this nut off is we're gonna have to remove this cotter pin. All right guys, I'm gonna use a pry bar up in here just to kind of keep control of our upper control arm and kind of pull it down, relieve a little bit of the pressure on this nut. This is likely to be very tight for you. You might be able to tell it looks a little wet. I sprayed some penetrating oil on there, hopefully loosen it up. Grab a 19 millimeter socket, 
I have one on my impact gun here along with a swivel socket so I can fit it in there. that on a couple threads. Go ahead and give it a tap here if this does not want to pop out with a hammer. Like I said, I have that on, the castle nut's still on there by a couple of threads. That's going to keep it from popping up wildly. All right, now you can see it popped out there. Like I said, it's quite stubborn. You might have to give it several wraps with a hammer. But now I'm gonna pull this back down. So we can get our nut out. It's gonna allow us to have the spindle swing down and kind of out of the way. All right guys, now we're gonna remove the bolt holding in the lower part of our strut. We're gonna need a 19 millimeter crescent on the bolt side and 19 millimeter socket over here for the nut. Kind of lifting up on the lower control arm to release some of the tension. And we get that bolt out. And the lower control arm sags a little bit, which is good. I'm gonna push this down as much as possible. All right, guys, if you remember, we have one more bolt up top here on our three studs. I'm just gonna take that out. All right guys, now that we have our factory strut off the truck, I put it up here on the table, show you one of our front spacers here. Now you remember up at the top, the way this is attached to the truck is through these three 14 millimeter nuts that mount onto these studs. We're gonna reuse these factory nuts. Take your spacer and where you see this kind of recessed hole, line that up on the studs for the strut like that. And then take the factory nut and get it started, and then do that for all three of them. And again, these are 14 millimeter. Now, you have three threaded holes up here at the top. Once we put the strut back in, we're gonna take this fresh hardware from the kit. There's a set of three bolts uh, for each strut with a lock washer and a flat washer. And once we get the strut up in there, we'll line these up and thread these through down from the top and cinch them down. You're gonna need a 16 millimeter socket for these. All right guys, now we're gonna lift our strut up into place. Basically, what this does is gonna oriented around 180 degrees, so it should fit in nicely. If you slide it in top first, and then we'll get these bolts up top started by hand. I have to play with it a little bit and it's tough if you can't see what you're doing and you're just doing it by feel. Once you get those two lined up, you can put the third one in the back. We're going to leave those somewhat loose for now while we go ahead and reattach the lower end of our strut. All right guys, if you're in tight here with this shot, you can kind of see our, our strut is not really lined up here. So I'm grabbing a pry bar. I'm gonna stick it underneath between the lower control arm and the bottom of the strut. I'm gonna kind of walk it up in there. 
That should get us the alignment we need. I'm gonna insert the bolt from the other side. Just like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our nut back on there and washer. And again, 19 millimeter socket and a 19 millimeter crescent to tighten these up. All right guys, I'm gonna use a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench uh, for these bolts here. Before I tighten that down too far, I'm gonna try and even it up on this other side here. All right guys, now at this step, because we added an inch and a half of space to our strut, it's pushing down that lower control arm to the point where you're not gonna very easily, with just your arms, be able to line the spindle back up to the upper ball joint. So what I did is I dropped our truck down. If you're already, this might be a little easier for you to be quite honest with you at home. If you've already got your truck on jack stands, get your floor jack underneath your lower control arm and lift it up a good maybe two inches or so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pry bar in up here above the upper control arm and line the spindle up and then pull the pry bar down just so we can get some threads through this to get our nuts started. And then we'll let the tool do the work uh, from there. You see I got some threads showing through there. Go ahead and grab your nut. that started and we'll let the power tool do the tough work from there like we did when we were taking this apart I'm using a swivel socket and a 19 millimeter socket to cinch this down and you're gonna want to make sure that it lines up so you can get your cotter pin through All right, so we're gonna reconnect our sway bar end link here. We had the nut threaded on there so we didn't lose it. And we're gonna cinch it up using a 17 millimeter socket. All right now we're gonna reconnect our high rod end. This one's going to be a little snug. Got our castle nut back on there. This is a 19 millimeter socket you're going to use to tighten this up. And then don't forget as we tighten this up we're going to need to line it up so we can get a cotter pin through. Go ahead and grab your cotter pin, get it back in there. All right, last couple steps here at this corner of the truck is we're gonna reconnect these two brackets that we took off earlier in the uninstall. Let's get that little guide pin in there for this one and grab the bolt that is a 12 millimeter for this. This one we still had seated in up top. This is a 10 millimeter up top. All right guys, now all the steps I just demonstrated here on the driver's side front quarter, 
You can go ahead and repeat that on the other side. The steps are all the same. You're going to have the same brackets and the same things to disconnect. And then we're going to head to the back of the truck and get our lifting or our leveling blocks inserted in the back. All right, now we're at the rear of our truck. And again, we have it up on a lift to give you a better view of what we're doing. If you're doing this at home, make sure you have jack stands, again, under the frame of your truck. And you're going to want to probably position your floor jack underneath the center of your rear differential. That will allow you to raise it up and down as needed as we go through the installation process for these leveling blocks. So the first step we're going to do back here is we're going to take out the bolt here that secures the bottom of the shock to this bracket right here. We're going to use 17 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket to do that. Right now we have four uh, ends here for our two U-bolts that have 19 millimeter nuts on them. We're going to take these nuts off and then we're going to be able to take the old factory U-bolts out. At this point you have to have your axle supported. I have these pull jacks right here. So once we get this freed up, we'll be able to lower the axle just enough to get our new spacer blocks in between the leaf spring and the kind of pedestal there where the block is going to sit. And as you can see, this bracket here came loose, so obviously you're going to want to support this when you take out the last nut. All right, now we're going to lower this side here. Now, if you're at this point already, guys, you're going to notice it's obvious that you're going to want to put the block in with the hole up top because it's going to fit on this little post right there. And then the post that's part of the block itself is going to drop into a hole on this shelf. The other thing you need to be aware of is that one side or one end of the block is shorter than the other. You're going to want the shorter end of the block towards the front of the truck. That's going to correct the pinion angle for your um, rear axle, and that's the proper orientation. So go ahead and slide it in. And once that's seated, we're going to slowly raise the axle back up so that the pin on the bottom side of the leaf spring is going to fit into place on the block. All right, guys, we have the axle loose from the other leaf spring. So we're going to be able to manipulate it a little bit here. And what we're looking for is a nice satisfying drop into place. Like that. And continue to raise your axle up. Kind of square it off. All right, now take the new U-bolts from the kit and drop them into place. Make sure they're lined up with the bracket that's on top of the leaf spring. Now we're going to take our factory bracket and slide it back up on there and put the nuts on. Might be a little snug. If you can tell, I'm kind of squeezing the U-bolt because the U-bolt kind of wants to spread, uh, which makes it hard to get this bracket on there. So just a little 
squeeze from your hand. One thing you want to pay attention to as you're cinching this bracket up is that you're doing it evenly so that it's sitting nice and snug and you have a nice even fitment as it mates up with the axle. So that's nice and level, now we're going to put our nuts on. The other thing I want to call out as I'm doing this, guys, is these are much beefier uh, bolts and nuts. I'm tightening up, or I'm tightening these bolts up as much as I can by hand right now. Might seem like a lot of effort, but if you put in a power tool here and you cinch it up, it might cause the bracket to kind of tilt one way and then you're gonna have an uneven uh, fitment here and it's gonna be uneven connecting with the axle. So I'm doing this by hand right now. Uh, like I said, to keep everything nice and even. And then we'll tighten it down with the power tool. All right, this last one, the threading's a little tight, so I'm gonna do that one with the power tool, but the other three I did cinch up by hand, so we should have no problem making a nice tight fitment. Like I said, the, the hardware that comes with this kit, guys, is a lot thicker and uh, more sturdy. This, these uh, nuts that we're tightening up here are require a 22 millimeter socket, and if you remember, the factory stuff required 19s. So we are dealing with beefier components. And just like you do when you're putting wheels and tires on your vehicle, go in a cross pattern. Don't do it all on one side. All right, now go ahead and repeat these same steps on the passenger side of the truck. All right, now that we have our U-bolts and lift blocks all cinched down and in place, go ahead and lift your axle back up so we can line up the lower end of our shock and thread this bolt back through. Again, we're reusing our factory hardware for this, obviously. And again, we're using a 17 millimeter crescent and a 17 millimeter socket to tighten this up. All right, guys, that wraps up this installation. Make sure you do the same steps we did over here on the passenger side. And that does it for my review and install of this Mammoth three inch front and two inch rear leveling kit for all 2005 and later Toyota Tacomas. For all things Tacoma, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.